Mike the Harbaugh, last year a federal court handed a stinging rebuke to Texas legislators who tried to add a strict voter photo ID law. The three-judge panel said Texas was trying to enact the most stringent voter ID law in the country. And they said the law as written would disenfranchise minorities and the poor. Well, the law was blocked under Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act. Then the Supreme Court, as we know, gutted the Voting Rights Act, one of the signature pieces of civil rights legislation in our country's history. Well, the conservatives on the court decided, quote, things have changed dramatically in the country since the law was first passed. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg last month summed up what she called the silliness of that argument. She told The New York Times, quote, it is like throwing away your umbrella in a rainstorm because you are not getting wet. Well, the result of the Supreme Court's decision was dramatic and swift, of course. Within hours, the Texas attorney general said his state would move to implement its controversial photo voto ID law. Well, last month, U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder sued to block the law. And now two groups, the Texas NAACP and the Mexican-American Legislative Caucus, have filed their own suit. Clearly, other states are watching to see how things unfold in Texas. Penda Harris, the co-director of the Advancement Project, and Wendy Weiser is the director of the Democracy Program at the Brennan Center. Center for Justice. Lawyers from that group are involved in the lawsuit. Let me go first to uh, Wendy. Wendy, let me ask you about this case. Uh, what, it, what, was, what was the previous way of deciding whether, a, or the current way, of why a voter is a legal voter or not, a legal citizen entitled to vote? What were the documentary requirements? You know, there is a federal requirement that applies across the nation that a first-time voter, um, the first time they vote after registering by mail, has to show some form of ID to establish their identity before voting and getting in the system. There is a wide range of IDs that are accepted, and, um, and this is, um, suffices as the requirement across the nation. So what about registration? What, what, how do you prove you're a citizen? It's a border state, Texas. How do you prove you're in this country legally? How do you do it? You know, you you you, um, you you don't actually have to file proof of citizenship when you register to vote. You have to swear an affidavit under penalty of perjury, and that is the proof of citizenship. The election officials can then investigate whether there are any questions and prosecute or remove mm. people where there are questions. What's the real disincentive for someone who shouldn't vote to vote? What is the real way it works in, in practical practical terms? You know, as a practical matter, the penalty for fraudulently voting is dramatic. I see. Um, it is five years in um, um, prison, $10,000 in fines. Those are the federal penalties. It is very easy to get caught. And the benefit to that individual voter of casting a fraudulent vote are quite small. It really doesn't make sense to do that. And well it makes sense that very few people actually do. When we were talking about that in the office with the producers trying to figure out what it is that stops and the disincentive is now to everybody watching. It's common sense. Why would a person who is in the country illegally, undocumented in this country, why would they risk exposure? Why would they risk imprisonment, a serious charge, yeah. simply and to vote as an American when they're not legally an American? Let me go to when, let me go to uh, Pend on that question. You would argue, I guess, that, well, do you argue that the current ways of determining whether a voter is that voter when they show up is adequate? Yes, absolutely, Chris. Um, the the um, Help America Vote Act requires every voter to u show ID when they register. It's just a question of the type of ID. And what we're seeing is we're seeing across the nation states enacting one uh, law more strict than the next. So it's only a particular form of ID. And you have to go, in Texas it could be up to 200 miles to a motor vehicle location to get that ID. You may have to pay $22 for a birth certificate or hundreds of dollars for a marriage a certificate or other papers to so it's like a poll tax show. it's exactly like yeah. a poll tax yeah. well let's take a look this week a spokesman for the texas attorney general that's general greg abbott rejected the arguments against the new voter id law quote voter ids are required of every texan regardless of race and are offered free of charge to anyone who needs one is that true penda well, what he just said is it true it's not it's being done regardless of race and it's free to get a voter id card First, it has an enormous racial impact because um, the, the people who don't have it are disproportionately people mm -hmm. of color. Second, I think Wendy's lawsuit really lays out that this mm -hmm. is intentional on the basis of race. And third, even though Texas is making the ID the, itself available for free, if you can get to the place and you have to pay for transportation, and if you have the uh, documents that they require, which cost money, then allegedly it's free. Anybody get caught like they were in Pennsylvania, uh, uh, Wendy? Anybody get caught like in Pennsylvania where they were stupid enough, the Republicans, to say this is why they were doing it? 
you know, not this year, but there have been years past where there have been um, public statements made by party officials saying that, you know, this is likely to reduce um, voter turnout by a few percentage points. It has been a subject of much contention and debate in Texas for a number of years. Everybody knew that this had a disproportionate impact on the basis of race and that there are hundreds of thousands of Texas eligible and registered voters who currently don't have IDs that are acceptable under this law. And they went through a very unusual process to push this law through. Um, this is the same state that was found last year by another federal court to have purposefully discriminated on the basis of race in its redistricting plan. Well, Penn, I bring that up because that guy Gleason, the party chair in Pennsylvania, openly said it would shave, it had shaved points like in a basketball game uh, in the 2012 election. And the other guy was saying we're going to carry, before the election of 2012, said we're going to carry this state because of the voter ID law. So they're pretty open-minded. Talk about open carry politically. They're willing to talk about it. Let me ask you what the chances are legally of Eric Holder winning this case. What's it look like to stop this voter photo ID requirement coming in? Yep. I think... Th I think it's a very strong case, this case brought by the uh, Department of Justice and the case that was just filed today by uh, the NAACP, with the, Wendy is the, one of the lawyers for, for both of those cases are very strong because the impact on voters of color is extremely harsh and there is strong suggested, suggestive evidence that it was intentional to keep voters of color out of the system. How do you prove that? Intention? Motive? You know, the, there's a lot of circumstantial evidence that this happened in um, real, that they took really unusual steps um, in order to get this voter ID law through. This, the, the evidence um, is going to, you know, pile up over the course of the case. Um, and, you know, we haven't even started any of the discovery in the case. But again, this is a state that has, you know, in the same legislative session found to have done other voting actions that were purposefully um, uh, done on the basis of race. We don't have to show motive in this case under the Voting Rights Act, but it is clear that the motive was present already. Okay. That's going to be interesting how you develop that. Anyway, Texas isn't alone, of course. North Carolina, we've been talking about, approved a voter law that is even more severe than Texas. In addition to requiring a state-issued photo ID, the law there also cuts early voting down by a week. It eliminates same-day registration. It allows paid voter registration drives. And it eliminates the ability for poll workers to issue provisional ballots to someone who shows up at the wrong precinct. And so we see here, Penda, a regular effort. I tie this into this talk about shifting the presidential election to a congressional district basis and taking away the, the full winner-take-all uh, electoral college uh, basis upon which we do it now, all looks like to me an attempt to disenfranchise black people and people of color generally. It just looks like it's the same pattern. Don't let the big cities count. That's what they're up to. Absolutely. This is politicians manipulating the system for their own advantage. And we're seeing it in Wisconsin, where we're going to trial in November. We've, we're seeing it in North Carolina, where Advancement Project just filed a case on behalf of the North Carolina NAACP. We're seeing it in Mississippi, where they've announced they're going to start implementing their strict photo ID. We've seen it in Pennsylvania, where the trial just concluded. It's, 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 um, it's a pattern across the country. Yep, I see the pattern, and we're going to keep talking about voter suppression. It's one of my most important issues here on Hardball, that and war and peace. Voter suppression's right up there because it has so much to do with our divide in this country over race. It sits there, and it doesn't go away. Thank you, Penda Hare, and thank you, Wendy Weiss. Good luck in your case. Up next, the CEO of Starbucks wants you to keep ordering Venti's, big Venti lattes, in fact, but he wants you to leave your guns at home. That seems reasonable. Howard Schultz joins us. He's the CEO of Starbucks, the whole company. And this is Hardball, the place for politics.